Hello, my name is Andrea. In this lesson, we will discuss how to give bad news to a patient. This lesson is divided into two parts. In part one, we'll review the principles of giving bad news. In part two, we'll see a consultant medical oncologist report. Let's get started. We'll begin with part one, principles of giving bad news. Let's see the process and main guidelines for breaking bad news to a patient. We'll see them in order. Give warning. First, a doctor must gently introduce that the news is not good. For example, they can say, I'm afraid your test results aren't very good. I'm sorry to have to tell you that the news isn't good. Choose an appropriate setting and have a friend or relative of the patient present. Take time. Make sure you fully explain the situation and the patient has time to answer all of their questions. Use appropriate language. Don't use very medical terms that may be difficult to understand. Emphasize the positive. A doctor may say the following to give positive alternatives. There's still a lot we can do to help you. Chemotherapy will make you more comfortable. Discuss the prognosis or what the situation will be like in the future. For example, One can never be certain about these things, but I'd say it's a matter of months rather than years. Supplement the verbal message. A doctor can say, I'd like to record this consultation so you can listen again if anything isn't clear. Arrange a follow-up session. You can say, I'd like to see you again next week. Can you come in again next week? Confirm that the patient understands. To close the session, a doctor can say, Could you tell me what we're going to do for you? Is everything clear to you? Now, let's see part two. A consultant medical oncologist's report. Here, we'll see a medical report of a patient who has been diagnosed with cancer. We can see his history, diagnosis, and treatment options. The name at the beginning of the report is of the patient, Mr. Harry Scott. Diagnosis. Previous pancreatic cancer. I reviewed Mr. Scott in the oncology clinic today. He has been less well and has lost 12 kilograms in the past few months. Unfortunately, his CT scan shows an area of ill-defined low attenuation in the tail of the pancreas. Although this is consistent with focal pancreatitis, the general feeling at the multidisciplinary team meeting was that this represents recurrent disease. This is especially likely in view of his clinical deterioration and rising CA 19.9. I discussed this with Mr. Scott and his wife. He was obviously disappointed with the scan results, but still tries to remain positive. We discussed the fact that surgery wasn't an option and symptom control was important. We also discussed the role of palliative gemcitabine. The potential benefits are small, but it is usually well tolerated, and he was keen to proceed with this. 
I will therefore book him into Ward 2 to start treatment in the next few weeks and have rechecked his bloods today. In the meantime, I would be very grateful if you would refer him to your dietitian. He himself is keen for this to happen. We will see him back in clinic once his treatment has started. That would be the end of today's lesson. I hope you found this information useful. See you in the next lesson.